I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that at some point in everyone's life, they've pretended to be a fictional character. And whilst most people would like to say that they grow out of this behaviour when they get older, hell, even as an adult, I bet most people pretend to be somebody else from time to time. For some people out there, they can really take this to the next level. Cosplayers, especially professional ones, can create some amazing work. Like this cosplayer, for example, who looks pretty much exactly like my future wife, Jill Valentine. Or this guy cosplaying as Silent Hill 2's James Sunderland, with a uh, pretty amazing looking Maria with him too. I don't think it's much of a stretch to say that most cosplayers, even the professional ones, don't actually adopt the persona that they're cosplaying as, so it completely takes over their life. Even with these amazing examples that you see right now, I bet the majority probably move on to another character or costume once a particular convention or photo shoot comes to an end. In fact, just as an example, at the time of recording this, many people would like this giant lady to step on them, and many, many more are actually dressing up as her. Because Resident Evil 8 has just been released, but give it a month or two, are those same people going to still want this lady to step on them? Well, um... Probably because there's some people out there. But for the majority of professional cosplayers who are out there, or even the incredibly talented amateur ones, I don't think the majority of them are going to dedicate their life to a single character, even if it is a giant woman who chases you around a really scary spooky castle. I don't think it's much of a leap to suggest that most professional cosplayers out there don't make their living off one or two characters and costumes, which is why I think it's safe to say that the vast majority of creators out there will likely create new costumes for new or popular older iconic characters, as time goes on. So where exactly am I going with this? Well in the video game Sonic the Hedgehog, also known as Sonic 06, Sonic meets a character who introduces himself as Sonic Man. Hey. And if you've not played Sonic 06, don't. It's awful. Sonic Man is a human character living in Soliana who has based his entire look and lifestyle on Sonic. And no, I don't know why this man in the background is having a massive argument with his girlfriend. Sonic 06, everybody! Anyway, Sonic Man. Hey. He wears a Sonic t-shirt, wears similar gloves to Sonic, red shoes, blue jeans, and even has a spiky headpiece complete with a reflective visor to give the illusion that he's actually Sonic. Hey. The player can even talk to him and challenge him to a race, and he runs very similar to Sonic with his hands trailing behind him. In fact, when you actually first talk to him, he pretends to be Sonic so much that he actually claims responsibility for Sonic's actions during the opening cutscene of the game. Hey. As far as we can tell, this character is more than just a simple guy cosplaying as Sonic. He's someone who's actually taken the full identity of Sonic the Hedgehog and is trying to make some kind of living or reputation from it. Hey. At least to the point where it looks like his entire day-to-day -day life is dedicated to being and living out his life as that character. Hey. So now where am I really going with this? Well, Sonic Man presents us with an interesting question. Can someone actually pretend to be Sonic, to the point where they can essentially be Sonic Man? I'm not talking about someone wearing a Sonic mascot costume for a one-off event or promotional job, I'm talking about someone who has actually been living as and pretending to be Sonic to the point where they've made a long-lasting career out of it for several years. A real-life Sonic Man who is making a living out of being Sonic Man. Well, someone has actually done this, and almost no one has heard of them. Which is a little bit strange, because from what I've been able to find out, someone out there has taken the identity of Sonic, lived as Sonic, and made a living as being Sonic for somewhere between 14 and 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Sonic. Sonic the Wrestler. So this is now the second video that I've done on Sonic and his history with wrestling, but in the previous video on the subject, it was clearly mascot performers appearing in full mascot costume at various scheduled promotions. This, however, is a professional wrestler who has been wrestling under the guise of Sonic the Wrestler. No, really, that is his name according to his social media profile, and has dressed up as Sonic for the last 14 years. Completely unofficially, and barely anyone knows he's been doing it. So before I get too far into this, I need to mention that there is very, very little information about this man. In fact, several wrestling databases which I consulted to help make this video might actually be mixing 
setting up the history of this guy and his supersonic counterpart, who may or may not be the same guy, but is also named Sonic and has a very similar wrestling style. It's very difficult to tell since almost every database that I consulted tends to mix up the match history of these two. Some of these databases in fact outright claim that they are the same guy, whereas some say no they're different. Well anyway, who is this guy and how have we not heard of him until now considering who he wrestles as and for how long he's been doing it? Well we're gonna look at that right now and find out what the hell is going on. So if you're not really into wrestling, it can be easy to think that this is literally the only form of wrestling out there. But wrestling as a sport really is quite enormous. Even outside regional variants such as New Japan Wrestling and Mexico's Lucha Libre, there's a massive independent and amateur wrestling circuit that exists in different regions all around the world. Wrestling as an industry is much bigger than the majority of people believe it is. And this is where our wrestler Sonic comes in. From what I can find, Sonic is from Lexington, Kentucky in the United States, and first entered the ring in 2007. And here is his first wrestling costume. Oh! He's dressed as Sonic the Goddamn Hedgehog. That man is Sonic. That man is dressed as Sonic the Hedgehog. You, sir, right now are being slammed by Sonic the Goddamn Hedgehog. What in the actual blue hell is going on? Well take a look at this guy's wrestling attire, and this happens to be one of his early costumes which also happens to be the costume that looks the most like Sonic. First of all, it's completely blue, which to be fair is a very easy mistake for those with casual knowledge of the real Sonic to make. Even Boom and Movie Sonic have changed the design for a near all blue Sonic. But look at the shirt he's wearing, he's got a white fur like design on it, just like the actual Sonic. And in this image, he's even wearing Sonic's trademark red shoes, and if you're not convinced Convinced. Look at the headgear! It's got spikes on it! Sonic style spikes! Oh, you think he doesn't wrestle wearing that? He does. So this footage is from DCW29, and whilst it's quite dark and not the best quality, you can clearly make out the spikes on the headpiece. And if you're actually still not convinced, look at his ring entrance! He's actually throwing golden rings to the crowd! And it also gets weirdly hilarious every time the commentator says, Sonic just slammed Skull Crusher! Or whatever beefcake name he's facing off against. Lucio being whipped off by Sonic, being whipped off by Sonic, whipped off by Sonic, whipped off by Sonic, whipped off. By Sonic. Even the crowd chants Sonic in some of the match footage I found. It's a weird feeling of both cringe and pride that someone is actually wrestling as Sonic the Hedgehog and he's actually going over with the crowd. So this guy is being quite brazen with his appearance so far, but it's even more so. I'm sure you're all familiar of this silhouette artwork to promote Sonic Adventure. Yeah, that one of Sonic pulling that grin he does. Well, Sonic the Wrestler also has his version of that, and here it is! Yeah, it's very, very similar. What was he going to do with this artwork? Unfortunately, I'm not sure, but I imagine it would have probably been used for his merchandise line or something along those lines. And so far in this video, I've called this wrestler Sonic, and I've not called him by his real name. Why not? Why have I not called him by his real name? Well, that's because nobody knows his real name. He's taken the identity of Sonic to such an extreme, there is no trace of his actual name anywhere online. His real identity is so secret that even his old social media account doesn't actually list his real name. 
In fact, he's so unknown that the only news article that I can find which specifically mentions and even shows a photograph of him comes from the BBC. Yeah, the British Broadcasting Corporation. It seems that a British wrestler named Martin Evans was interviewed for the BBC, and he talked about his first match that he ever did, which happened to be against Sonic. And amazingly, in a very rare occurrence for Sonic, he actually won the match. Yeah, we'll come on to this more a little bit later, but Martin is actually quoted as saying, I hadn't even faced off against an opponent in training, and it would be against the man that I'd been putting down for the last few weeks, a 150 pound small guy called Sonic. I again acted all smug and overconfident at the prospect. Less than several seconds later, I had been taken down and splashed for the pin, much to the fans' delight. Wow, just imagine it. You're doing your first ever wrestling match in front of a paid audience, and you lose to a man dressed as Sonic. There is no greater honour to be had, my son. And just returning to the fact that when you think about it, the fact that we don't know this wrestler's real name is quite extraordinary. Even before the internet became wildly accessible to the majority of people, popular wrestlers like The Undertaker and The Rock, their identities were well known and well publicised if you knew where to look. But here we have a guy who has dressed as Sonic for over a decade, who has appeared at some big public events, who based on his MySpace page is also a bit of a ladies man, and we don't know his real name. How long has he been doing this for? Well, this is where multiple sources can't seem to agree on his exact start date, but to give you some idea how long he's been around for, he actually has a social media presence on MySpace, and his account, based on the metadata within the page, appears to be a legacy account, meaning it was made prior to when MySpace rebranded itself to become more music and more musician focused. It's that old. Most wrestling databases claim that he started his in-ring career in 2007, and one database even puts his in-ring debut as far back as 1999. Most sites now list him as being inactive, however, his last match was actually on the 28th of February 2020 at CMLL Super Fridays, the Mexican equivalent of something as big as WWE Smackdown or Raw. So why is he currently inactive right now? Well, look at the last date of his match. It was literally the month before COVID-19 shut down most of the world and the global pandemic really bit into public and sporting events. But here is what he looked like in his last wrestling match. Oh my god! Sonic went super! So remember at the start of the video, hey. I said there's not much information on this wrestler and I think there might actually be two different wrestlers named Sonic? Yeah, this is the other wrestler who is also named Sonic and I honestly don't know if it is the same guy or not. In fact, there might even be a third wrestler who's also sporting the name Sonic. One database lists this match as being part of Sonic's fight history. Oh! You think Sonic is the guy in the blue? No, nope, it's this guy in the green. Hey. You... you don't believe me? Well, look at the trousers he's wearing, my friend. No, your eyes don't deceive you. That is indeed the modern Sonic head logo you can see there. Only it's now green. And this guy also goes over with the fans, who end up chanting his name repeatedly during the match. So if these people are actually all the same guy, he now wrestles as a luchador wrestler on Mexican TV. And look at the scale of this event. This is not a cheap indie or amateur venue. That's a major event. How is this guy literally the opening act for a major wrestling television event and no one knows who his real name is and very few people have even heard of him as a wrestler? Well, this is where we get into some semi-controversial territory. How many of you non-wrestling fans out there know what a jobber is? So a jobber is a term used to describe a wrestler who pretty much never wins a single match but performs to make another wrestler look good or push a new and upcoming star. And in some wrestling circles, the term jobber is a bit of a dirty and frowned upon word. Basically, the term has a lot of negative connotations, but to be a good jobber means you have to be really on your game. You have to look like you can wrestle at a good, high level and be a genuine threat to any other wrestler who enters the ring. 
So whilst on the surface a jobber can be seen as a bit of a joke because everybody knows they're going to lose, they have to be at the top of their game every single time they perform. They have to give the impression that there is just a tiny chance that they could actually win, even though the wrestler themselves know they're going to lose the match again and again and again. And this is partly why I think Sonic isn't that very well known. Jobbers, for the respect they have by their fellow wrestlers, are just not that popular with the fans. Oh yes, there are a few exceptions to this, the Brooklyn Brawler comes to mind, but even then, people don't usually buy t-shirts of jobbers, or action figures, and they're never in the various video game adaptations. And because Sonic is a jobber, nobody knows his real name, because nobody has really looked into him on a massive fan level. But that said, from what little I've been able to find on him, he's a very talented wrestler. There's a few matches of him on YouTube which you can watch for free. Now, I don't know if you can safely say his move is sonic -y, since he's a midweight wrestler and they're quite renowned for doing various flips and high speed moves, similar to that which Sonic does. But his finishing move is apparently called the Sonic Boom. And I could not find any clips of it. At least not to safely say yes. That's the Sonic Boom. So I would love to find out more about this guy and see if there are a few more of his matches out there, because from what little I have seen, he's a very talented wrestler. And he also has his own fan base, at least according to this picture and a few lines on his MySpace page. So if you are into Mexican wrestling and can say for certain if this guy really is this guy, please do let me know. And has anybody out there actually seen Sonic perform in his full blue outfit? I'd love to find more matches that he was involved in and see more about this guy. And if if you happen to know of any other strange or obscure Sonic or even non-Sonic gaming history that I should look into and cover, please let me know in the comments and who knows, maybe I'll turn it into a video someday. See you next time. Hey guys, just wanted to give a huge thank you to the one and only DJ Slope of Slope's Game Room for the voice cameo in this episode, and to also thank you for checking out this episode of Madnik Mechanic. Please don't forget to click that like, subscribe, and the bell notification button. If you'd like to support the channel further and get early access to my videos, please consider joining my Patreon, like these awesome people did. Ali Dexy, Atomic Kittens, Ben Malski, Dave Morley, Jonathan Steinstone, Kenny Newbury, Mark Davies, Mohamed Khan, Rusty Coolpix, Mick Stevenson, Stalin Usher 2, That's Gamer, The Wax, Tybert Renux, and Yuri Senpai! If, like them, you'd like to support the channel, links to do so are in the video description. Or if you just want to continue the adventures, then please consider following me on Twitter and Instagram. But most of all, just thank you for taking the time out to enjoy this video and appreciate the work I do. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you. Hey.